to the Gospel of John, please, the Gospel of John, chapter 1. Gospel of John, chapter 1, we've been in our reading tonight, in chapter 6 of John, the first chapter. And the Bible says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Let's bow, please, for a word of prayer. Dear Father, we thank you for this great passage of Scripture. We thank you for all Scripture that is given by inspiration of God. And we thank you that it's, it's good and it's true and it's everlasting, forever settled in heaven, preserved unto every generation. Thank you, my Lord, that we can come together in a free country we thank you for our freedoms here. We pray for our president. We pray for our congress. We pray for our senators and our uh, representatives. We pray for our mayors, uh, Father, and those who are officials all across our country. Lord, they need wisdom and understanding. They need insights to govern this people. And Father, I pray for their souls that they might be saved one day, that you'd speak to their hearts and bring them to a saving knowledge of Christ. I pray for revival in America. But Lord, tonight we just need you to give us a little touch to encourage our hearts along the way to strengthen us, um, Father, to help us to be like Jesus. I pray you'd guide and direct, that you'd open the lips of your servant to speak in the heart of every person, receive the word of God, and we'll thank you for what you do. In Jesus' name, amen. In this book and in these verses, John is writing about John the Baptist and the Lord Jesus Christ. Now John came to preach about and point to the Lord Jesus, to prepare mankind to receive the Messiah, to prepare especially the Jewish nation to receive their king. But when the Messiah came, he was not well received. The Bible at the pen of Isaiah says, he is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. The great creator God came to earth, wrapped himself in human flesh, and he was lightly esteemed and despised and rejected, and his own received him not. What a sad commentary on the human heart and the spiritual condition of man in general. However, John does quickly add right here, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So although the vast majority of mankind has rejected the Lord Jesus Christ, the minority of mankind that has received him and is yet to receive him will become the children of God as a result. Now the Lord Jesus himself says the same thing in John chapter 3 where he says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And in chapter 3 verse 16 he says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Now if you look in John chapter 3 and verse 6, you'll notice that the word spirit is capitalized so it's speaking of God, the third person of the triune Godhead. Now if you take these verses all together, we find distinct brotherhoods of which we all can be a member. Two, by natural birth, and one, spiritually. So let's look at these brotherhoods that exist. Number one, we have the brotherhood of man. John chapter 3, let's go there and look at verse 6. John chapter 3, verse 6. The brotherhood of man, or born of the flesh. Look what it says. That which is Born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So we're taking the first half of that verse, and we're looking at that which is born of the flesh. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 39, the Bible says, All flesh is not the same flesh. 
But there is one kind of flesh of men, another kind of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. Now I want you to notice the Bible says there's one kind of flesh of men. Did you hear that? I'll say that again. There is one kind of flesh of men. All human beings are of the same flesh. We are born of the same flesh. Oh, there are differences of colors of that flesh, but that does not make it a different kind of flesh. The Bible says all men are born of man flesh. Notice also it says there's another flesh of beasts, another flesh of fishes, and another flesh of birds. So God's saying that beasts are beasts, and fish are fish, and birds are birds. They're all different kinds of flesh. Nowhere in the Bible is it ever mentioned or hinted at that there is some kind of in-between flesh. There's no flesh in between man and beasts. There's no flesh in between beasts and fishes. And there's no flesh in between fishes and birds. He says there's a kind of flesh of man. There's another flesh of beasts. There's another flesh of fishes. There's another flesh of birds. They're all distinct, different kinds of fleshly creatures. There's none in between. There's no hybrids. Therefore, a bird has never been nor ever will be a beast or a fish. And likewise for each of them. There's no fish that has ever been or ever will be a bird. Contrary to popular uh, imagination of mankind, vain imagination as a matter of fact, the truth is that one will never be the other and never has been the other. Also, man has never been, nor will, or can be a beast, or a fish, or a bird. Now, there have been times when I wish I was a bird. You know, wouldn't it be awesome to be able to just fly away and soar through the air? Sure it would, especially when you're stuck in traffic, and then you could just pull over and pew, take off. There's times I wish I was a fish. Boy, when I'm out on a boat and I look at that water, it'd be fun to jump in that water and just poof through that water. But you know what? I'm not a fish, never have been a fish, never will be a fish. I'm a man. I'm not a bird, never have been a bird, never will be a bird. I'm a man. Mankind is a kind of flesh. It's man flesh. Go with me to Romans chapter 8. Book of Romans. Let's look at chapter 8 and verse 5. The Bible says, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. Now, you've probably heard of the phrase, brother man, right? I've heard of that phrase, brother man. It used to be a little more popular maybe than it is today, but brother man. Well, this is an accurate statement as far as it goes. We are all brothers as far as being born of the flesh of man. Since we are born of the flesh, we, therefore, mind the things of the what? Of the flesh. This word mind is the Greek word phroneo. It means to interest oneself in or to have sentiment for. So why are human beings so interested in and why do human beings have sentiment for other human beings? Because we're the same flesh family. That's why. That's why beasts mind the things of beasts, and fish mind the things of fish, and birds mind the things of birds. Why? Because that's what flesh they're of. And I've never seen a fish interested in bird things. I've never seen birds interested in beast things. Animals have no interest in or sentiment for symphonies or literature or mathematics, or sciences, or a host of other things. Why? Because those are the things of man flesh. We're the only flesh that concerns ourselves with those things. Why? Because we're a distinct kind of flesh. Now birds, they're all concerned about worms and seeds and bugs and 
flying around, hanging out in the trees and stuff. That's all. That, why do they concern themselves with that? Because they're of bird flesh. The little fishes, they swim through the sea and they're looking for little things to eat and little places to go and, and other fish to hang around with. Why? Because they're, they're fish flesh. And, and the same with, you know, the, all the herds and all the flocks. Why do all those animals, why do they all go together in these herds and flocks? You know why? Because they are beast flesh. I've never seen a bunch of humans hanging out in a field eating grass. Why? Because that's beast stuff. We don't do that. We do human stuff. Why? Because we're human flesh. You got it? In Romans chapter 9 and verse 8, if you want to turn there, just a page or so, the Bible says, that is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for seed. So they which are the children of the flesh are not the children of God. He was specifically speaking about the Jews, and he was saying, look, you're not a child of God just because you're born a Jew. Being born a Jew doesn't make you a child of God. And I want to say this, being born a human being doesn't make you a child of God. He says, that which, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. Human beings are not naturally the children of God. Now, it does not matter what race you are, what nationality you are, what culture or heritage you have. You are born of the flesh, and you're not a child of God by virtue of your human birth. You are part of brother man, but you're not part of the family of God. You are born of the flesh, but you're not born of God. And you mind the things of the flesh, but you don't mind the things of God when you're just part of the brotherhood of flesh, the brotherhood of man. Let's go to the second brotherhood. It's in John chapter 1 and verse 13. And the first one is the, the brotherhood of, flesh, uh, of man, which is born of the flesh. The second one I, I have called the brotherhood of blood, born of the blood. Look what it says, John chapter 1 verse 13 which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh. So we already looked at those who were born of the flesh. Now look at, let's look at being born of blood. Now we are probably all familiar with sayings like, like uh, blood brothers, right? And sometimes people will greet each other and say, hey, blood. How many of you heard that? A couple of you. You got to get with it. And these are, these are also true as far as they go. We have what we call blood relatives, right? And those, who, the, those are the ones who are of our same human family. Not the, the general human family, but our subfamily, our human family, our relatives that have the same bloodline. And so they are called blood relatives. And sometimes we make a distinction, you know, when there's someone who's, you know, married into the family and we say, well, he's not blood, right? <laughs> he might be part of the family, but praise God, he ain't blood, right? And then we've heard of, we've heard of blood brothers, which originally meant that two people would cut themselves, usually on the wrist, and hold their wounds one against the other, supposedly mingling their blood and becoming brothers. And they were called blood brothers. And of course, this was more symbolic than it was reality, but we get the idea. They wanted to mingle their blood so that they could be blood brothers. When someone says, hey, blood... They're signifying that you are part of an inner circle, whether it be an actual family or family by connection or commitment. Sometimes gangs will uh, consider themselves a family and they'll consider themselves blood, you know. They're not blood, they're blood. <laughs> See, if you're blood, that means you're a relative. If you're blood, that means you're just part of the group. So as you, and, and so they'll be part of the brotherhood. Those are the brothers hanging around in the hood. It's called the brotherhood. <laughs> now, a brotherhood 
are those who share similar convictions or professions or, or a race or certain interests, and they're called the brotherhood. You see, there's all these different brotherhoods, right? So we have all these sayings that have to do with this brother and blood brother and hey blood and all that kind of thing. Now, Acts chapter 17, verse 26 says, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Now, there's some several really interesting things here. God said that before the foundations of the world, he determined their habitations of all the nations. Think about that just for a second. The nations aren't where they are because that's where they want to be. The nations are there because God gave them that habitation. You know, the Turks are in Turkey because that's where God wants them. And the Czechs are in Czechoslovakia because that's where God wants them. And Russia is where God wants Russia. And United, you understand? You say, well, what about the United States? It became an, a new nation. Yeah, God had it all worked out from eternity past. That's what, I'm just reading the verse. Didn't it say here, and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation? God has said, you can live here. Now, one of the bounds of our habitation is earth. Right? We are here... Uh, this is the bound of our habitation as human beings. You see, we are all actually blood brothers or blood relatives because we all share the same blood of Adam and Eve. God started out with how many humans? One. And then he made another one. He had two. And from those two, from, the, from that blood of Adam and the blood of Eve, came all the nations of the earth. Look, friend, it doesn't matter what color you are, it doesn't matter what nationality you are, you are my blood brother in that sense. In that you have the same blood that I have because we all come from the same parents, if you go back far enough. Kind of makes all the foolishness that's going on in the world, all the fighting and infighting, it kind of makes it foolish, doesn't it? It's all just a bunch of family squabbles is what it is. And so you see you're my blood brother or my blood sister in the truest sense, no matter what color you are or what nation you were born in. All the nations of men that dwell on the face of the earth have come from, the Bible says, one blood. We've come from one kind of flesh, human flesh, and we've come from one blood, human blood. Human blood's different than animal blood. And animal blood is different than fish blood. And fish blood is different than bird blood. There's one kind of blood of beasts, one, another kind of blood of fishes, another kind of blood of birds, and another kind of blood of man. When I need a blood transplant or a blood transfusion, I hope they don't give me fish blood. <laughs> or bird blood. Amen? Well, Pastor Alquist, uh, we see you need a little blood there. How about, if, what would you rather have? Would you rather have bird blood or fish blood? I wouldn't have that blood. <laughs> that blood can't do me any good. Why? Because it's a different kind of blood than I need. Right? I need human blood. You know, when I never hear the blood bank calling for all the people to bring in their farm animals to donate blood. <laughs> Well, we've got a blood shortage. Let's call the fishery up and have the, the, the uh, fishery bring in all their fish. We'll get little ounces of blood from each fish. Or, well, how about the aviary? Let's get them to bring all their chickens and all their birds in. We'll get little bits of blood out of every animal and we'll have enough blood and we'll, a blood bank won't have a shortage anymore. I never hear that. If it were possible, wouldn't you hear that? I mean, you, you can get a lot of blood out of one cow, amen? Why you stick a needle in me when you can stick a needle in a cow? But you see, it's a different kind of blood. I'm not related to a cow. I don't got no cow brothers. I don't got no donkey sisters. Now, some of my brothers act like cows and some of my sisters act like donkeys, but we're not related by blood, amen? And that's why there's a difference between killing animals and killing humans. The Old Testament, in the Old Testament, the shedding of animal blood was acceptable for procuring food to eat and sacrifices unto God. But the shedding of human blood was an abomination punishable by death. Now, if we're all animals, why a distinction? 
If pigs are human too, why are we eating pigs? Humans are a superior created order. And they are created in the image of God, unlike beasts and birds and fish. So when you are born as a human being, you are born of the brotherhood of man by the flesh, and you are born as a blood brother to all other human beings on the planet. That's pretty incredible, isn't it? Amen. Not me. I'm not a blood brother of that or this. Yeah, you are. You can deny it. But my Bible says of one blood he made all nations. That's why racism is so ignorant, pathetic, and foolish. Because underneath the thin layer of fabric, the colored fabric called skin is coursing the same man blood giving life to the same man flesh. And so there's a brotherhood of flesh and there's a brotherhood of blood that unites all mankind. But there is a brotherhood that does not unite mankind. There is a brotherhood that actually divides mankind. A brotherhood into which a human being cannot enter by simple human birth. And it's the third point, the brotherhood of spirit. John chapter 3, verse 6 again. The brotherhood of spirit. That which is born of the flesh is, and you could justifiably, but we won't because we don't add to the scripture, but you could put in there, that which is born of the flesh is simply flesh. The, te- the, the, the construction of this is that which is born of the flesh is flesh and nothing out but flesh and cannot be anything else but flesh. It's just flesh. But that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Look over John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. You've heard me quote these verses many, 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 many times. John chapter 1, verse 12, verse says, but as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born, what? Not of blood. And not of the flesh. We're not, talking, we're not talking about a spiritual birth that requires human blood, but a spiritual birth, we're not, we're not talking about a physical birth that requires physical blood, we're talking about a spiritual birth that requires spirit. You understand? The only way to enter into the human race is by birth. No man has ever evolved into the human race. I never met anybody that says, well, I'm almost there. You know, I'm, 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 getting, I'm getting more and more human every day. One of, the, you know, one of these days, I'll be a real human being. There's no race of beings on the planet that are in between, and they're becoming human. Nobody ever born of an animal was born human. Why? Because the only way to get in the human race is to be born of a human being. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. And I might add, that which is born of blood is just flesh and blood. You cannot be born in the human race by being born of a beast or a fish or a bird. No one has Big Bird as listed as father on their birth certificate or Peter Ponimus, or Daffy Duck. If you do, you're nuts. (laughs) To be a human child, you must be born of human parents by blood and by flesh. Likewise, to be a child of God, you must be born of God by His Spirit, because God is a spirit. So, Man is flesh and blood, so to become human, I have to be born of flesh and blood. God is a spirit, so to be a child of God, I have to be born of the spirit. There has to be a spiritual birth. That brings me into the brotherhood of the spirit. Being born, well, the Bible says, um, well, being born of humans gives you a human nature, right? Being born of God gives us a divine nature. Speaking of the promise of being born again, 
as one of the promises Peter wrote in 2 Peter 1 4 whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So Peter's saying, you know what? What is the promise? The promise is, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, but as many as received him to them gave you power to become the sons of God, even to the believers in him, were born not of blood, nor the will of flesh, nor the will of man, but what? Of God. That's a promise. And when I take advantage of that promise, and I trust Jesus Christ, I become a, I become a partaker of the divine nature. So before I was saved, I had one nature. I had a human nature. I was born of the flesh, I was born of blood. I was just nothing but a human being. But when I received Christ as my Savior, all of a sudden, I became a partaker of the divine nature. I was born of the Spirit of God. I became part of the family of God. Now I have two natures. I have the human nature that I had from my fleshly birth, and I also have the divine nature which I have from my spiritual birth. Being born of the flesh and blood brings you into the kingdom of earth. Being born of the spirit brings you into the kingdom of heaven. 1 Corinthians 15, 50. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So all these people that are over here that, are, that have only been born once, they've only been born of the flesh and of the blood, they can't, enter in, they can't inherit the kingdom of God. It's not theirs. They can't, they can't go there. Why? Because they're just flesh and blood. The bounds of their habitation have been set. Boom. They're good for here on earth. But beyond that, they have no inheritance. They have no claim. They have no life. Just as a person knows that they have been born of the flesh and the blood, a person knows if they've been born of the spirit or not. Look, you should know if you're born again or not. Do you know that you're born? Yeah, you do. There you are, right? You know you're born in the flesh. Why? Because you have flesh and you have blood and you have bone and you walk around in this natural world. You know what? You should, you should know just as assuredly that you're born of the Spirit. Amen. If you're born of the Spirit. If you, if you don't know, if, if you can't say, yeah, I know I'm born again, then you're not born again. That's like saying, well, I don't know if I've ever been born. Have I been born? I don't know, I think I'm born. I'm not really sure I'm born. That's pretty ridiculous, isn't it? What do you think it sounds like when a, when a person says, well, I think I've been born again. I'm not sure if I've been born again. How do I know if I've been born again? I'll tell you how you know if you're born again. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. That's how. When you get saved, the whole, the, you become a partaker of the divine nature. The Holy Spirit of God comes to live in you, and he tells you, you are a child of God. You are a child of God. And when you doubt, the Holy Spirit says, no, 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 you're a child of God. His spirit beareth witness to my human spirit. The divine nature speaks to the human nature and says, listen, you're not just flesh and blood. You're born of the spirit. You're not just one dimensional. You've got two dimensions. You don't just have a natural nature. You have a divine nature too. That's a pretty powerful witness. If you don't have that witness, I'm not saying that there aren't days you feel down and out. I'm not saying that there aren't days that you might question. I'm just saying that the Holy Spirit, the Bible tells me, witnesses to our spirit and tells us we're the children of God. I know that I'm saved. I'm not saved because of me, I'm saved because of Jesus. And I know that I'm saved because, well, number one, the Bible tells me I am. Number two, I just know. <laughs> right? I just know. Well, how do you just know? If, if you don't know, I can't explain it to you. Because it's, it's the Holy Spirit witnessing to my spirit and giving me that peace and assurance that I'm a child of God. See? The people don't understand that that aren't born again because they don't have that inner witness. Now, Galatians 3.26 says, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. You know, when I was a student at Clarion University, well, it was Clarion College when I went there, but university sounds more hoity-toity, so I'm going <laughs> to... I, I like to say I, graduated, you know, I went to Clarion University. You know, when I'm feeling hoity-toity, I'm Dr. Alquist. All right? 
When I'm feeling nitty gritty, I'm Pastor Alquist. When I'm feeling low down, I'm George Alquist. <laughs> All right? So, I, I, you know, I, I want to sound hoity-toity, so I, when I went to Clarion University, so, okay, you got that? <laughs> when I went to Clarion University, I was made an honorary member of the Black Student Union. They called me the White Soul Brother. They did. <laughs> what you laughing at? I'm just telling the truth. <laughs> but that term soul brother could only be true of human beings as a metaphor or at the lowest and basest order of mankind. For you see, true soul brothers are those who are born of the Heavenly Father who is a spirit. True soul brothers are those who not only share the brotherhood of the flesh and the brotherhood of the blood, but they share the brotherhood of the spirit. Now that's soul brothers, amen? My father and your father are the same father, spiritually. Why? Because we've both been born of the spirit, and we're both children of God, and we are the brotherhood of the spirit. Now that's the genuine soul brother. You are my brother, man, by flesh and by blood. And you are only my spiritual brother if you have Jesus Christ as Savior, having been born again of the Spirit of God. Now, remember I said the two, the two other brotherhoods, they, they unite mankind. Brotherhood of flesh, brotherhood of blood. But remember I said the brotherhood of the Spirit divides mankind. Because what the brotherhood of the Spirit does is it sets apart this brotherhood of the Spirit, from the other brotherhoods. There's a great gulf fixed. There's a great divide, if I can put it. There's a line of demarcation. There's that side and this side. Galatians 4.29 But as then he that was born after the flesh persecuted him that was born after the Spirit, even so it is now. Isn't that interesting? See, when you were over here and you were just part of the brotherhood of man and the brotherhood of blood, you were part of the group. I mean, they liked you and you were part. But when you became part of the brotherhood of the spirit, you crossed the street. Now you're on the other neighborhood. You're in the other side of the street. Now there isn't that same acceptance of you as there was when you were on that side of the street only. This is an exclusive brotherhood, secured not by human blood, but by the blood of God as he died on the cross of Calvary. Jesus became part of mankind, didn't he? God became human flesh and had human blood, and he was willing to shed that blood and give that life as a human in our place. Now, if you notice, after his resurrection, when his disciples see him, and they get all afraid, and he says, touch me, and handle me, and see that a spirit hath not flesh and bone, as you see me have. Do you see what he left out? What did he leave out? The blood. He didn't have any blood anymore. Why not? He shed it on Calvary's cross. The life is in the what? While you're on planet earth, it's in the blood. But when you have Jesus Christ, your Savior, life isn't in the blood. The only earthly life's in the blood. I got eternal life. That's in the spirit. I mean, I got a transfusion when I got saved. And God pumped into me spiritual life by the spirit. Eternal life by the spirit. And so when a person dies without Christ, now they, their flesh corrupts and their blood corrupts and they have no life. Because the life was in the blood and now there's no more blood and so they don't have any life so they have to have eternal death. But when you have Jesus Christ as your Savior and the flesh corrupts and the blood corrupts, you still have life because your life is not of the blood, your life is of the Spirit. And the Spirit is forever. That's exciting, isn't it? 
It's an exclusive brotherhood that's characterized by both human nature and divine nature. But our brothers of man do not understand. As a matter of fact, 1 Corinthians 2.14 says, but the natural man, our brothers in the flesh and our brothers in the blood, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them. Why? Because they're spiritually discerned. They don't have the wherewithal, the power, the, the, the capability of understanding what we're talking about. Therefore, Romans 8, 5 says, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. The brothers of the flesh and the brothers of the blood can only go so far with us until we enter into the arena or area of the spiritual, and then we have to depart ways. Because unsaved people are, can only mind the things of the flesh. That's what they're concentrating on. That's what they're interested in. That's what they have sentiment for, the things of the flesh, the things of the flesh. But the Bible says, if you're of the Spirit, you mind the things of the Spirit. So we, as born-again people, children of God, born of the Spirit, we mind the thing, we're interested in the things of the Spirit. We have sentiment for the things of the Spirit. Haven't you found that to be true in your life? Since you got saved? Hey, before you were saved, would you be here tonight? Spending your Sunday night here? When you could be home? Why are you here? Because you're minding the things of the Spirit. Why are you doing that? Because you're of the Spirit. And they that are of the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, and they that are of the Spirit do mind the things of the Spirit. So they can't understand why we're so interested in this. They can't understand why we have such a, a desire and sentiment for it, because they don't have it. The brothers of the flesh depart ways when it comes to the spirit. That's why the scripture says, if, a man, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He literally is a new creature, unlike any other creature on planet Earth. It's a whole new creature category. You see, there's, there, you could say there's man and there's beast, and there's fish, and there's bird, and there's born-again Christians. It's a whole different category. They're all of different kinds of flesh, but see, we're in a whole different world. We're a different kind of spirit. Because we're born of the spirit. Man has a different... When you trust Christ to save you, you have a different nature, and you mind different things, and you'll spend eternity in a different place. The news, here's the good news, but as many. Isn't that a good phrase? He said, you know what, he came unto his own, but his own received him not. But as many, but as many as received him, to them, he was faithful, wasn't he? To them he gave the power to become the sons of God. You are part of the great whosoever, Romans 10, 13, if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior. Now, because speaking to Christians about Christ, John wrote this, 1 John 2, 2. And he, that's Christ, is the propitiation for our sins. That's Christians. He's the payment, the satisfactory payment for our sins. But then he adds this. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. So God's saying, you know what? There is the brotherhood of flesh and there is the brotherhood of blood. But over here there is the brotherhood of spirit. And anybody, anybody in this world of the brotherhood of man and the brotherhood of flesh and blood, anybody in that, in that brotherhood can choose to be part of the brotherhood of spirit. They can choose to be born again by grace through faith in Christ. I'm glad I did. And if you've never been saved, you need to get saved because you'll be glad you did. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Our heads are bowed and eyes are closed. As we think about these things, dear Christian, I hope that you'll claim your spiritual birthright and not be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I hope that you'll have a heart for and a desire to see your brother man become your brother in Christ that you'll determine in 2018 to set out 
on a mission. A mission of getting the gospel to the lost. To, to helping your brother man become your brother in Christ by grace of faith in the one and only God-man, the Savior, the Messiah, Jesus. Maybe tonight you'll dedicate yourself and say, listen, I'm going to pass out more tracts this year. I'm going to try to verbally witness to more people this year. I'm going to try to be more faithful to church soul winning this year. I, I'm just, I just want to be used of God to help men and women, boys and girls, become partakers of the divine nature and be born of the Spirit. Maybe here, or maybe you're watching or listening and you've never been saved. The family of God is the only family you can choose to become a member of. The spiritual birth is the only birth you can have a say in. You can choose tonight to be born of the Spirit and become a child of God and my brother or sister in the Spirit if you want to. The question is, do you want to? Are you going to be content to just stay in the brotherhood of man and the brotherhood of blood and never be part of the brotherhood of the Spirit? Are you content to be born of the flesh and born of blood and never enter into the kingdom of God? Or will you be born of the Spirit? Tonight you can make that choice, and only you can make it. God's made a place. It's open. The invitation is to you. The question is, do you want to choose Jesus as your Savior? Maybe tonight you do, and you'd look up at me and say, yes, preacher, I'm looking up at you because I know I need to do this, and I'm finally ready. I'm here, and I'm ready to trust Christ as my Savior. Anybody like that here tonight? If you're watching or listening, now's the time. Wherever you are, if you're driving, pull over. But wherever you are, bow your head. Confess to God you're a sinner. Claim the blood that was shed for your sins and receive the Savior that died in your place and rose again. And he'll come in. He said, him that cometh unto me I will no wise cast out. Receive him tonight as your Savior and you can be born of the Spirit. Thank you, my Father, for this truth. Father, we are so excited tonight. We've been born of the blood, we've been born of the flesh, but Father, we have been born of the Spirit. Oh, it's awesome to be in the family of God. By grace, undeserved favor through faith. Thank you, Lord, for having an open invitation to all my brothers of man that they can become my brother in Christ. Help me be faithful at telling them. and Help me to be faithful at being a good example, too. I pray you bless the invitation. If only you can, we'll give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand, please. We're going to sing our closing hymn number 233, More Love to Thee. I don't know about you, but I know I have a desire to love Jesus more than I do. And only He can help us do that. And so as we sing this hymn tonight, we're saying, More love to Thee. Maybe you'd like to come and pray, More love to Thee. But you do what God wants you to do. Maybe you'd like to come tonight and say, Lord, I want to I do that. I want to pass out more tracts. I want to tell more people. I, I want to be more involved in helping my brother man become my brother in Christ. If that's your prayer, you come. If you have questions about salvation, you come. You do as God leads as we sing on the first. More love to thee, O Christ. More love to Thee, hear Thou the prayer I make on bended knee. This is my earnest plea, more love, O Christ, to Thee. You know, this afternoon, uh, my wife and I went out to eat, and the waitress came, and she gave us the bill, and I took one of our waitress tracks out, and I said, listen, um, this was written just for you. And she went, oh, she said, I'm a believer. Amen. And she told me what church she goes to, and she knows Christ her Savior. So you know what? I met a sister today I didn't know I had. Amen? Amen. <clears throat>
And I wouldn't have met her, and I wouldn't know she's my sister, unless I'd have tried to encourage her to become my sister. So sometimes you're going to hand a tract to somebody, and it may be the one thing that starts them on their path to Jesus, to become your brother or sister. You might never know about it until you get to heaven. But someday you might hand a tract to somebody and find out it is your brother, it is your sister, and you can rejoice together. Now let me just say this. You know, don't get into all the stuff and start arguing about stuff. That, that, just be rejoice that it's your sister. Amen. <laughs> rejoice that it's your brother. Amen. Invite him to church. Then we'll get into all that stuff. All right. <laughs> but anyway, that's what passing out tracts can do. I hope you're doing that. Let's sing on the second. Once earthly joy I crave, sought peace and rest. Now the alone I seek, give what is best. This all my prayer shall be, more love, O Christ, to Thee, more love to Thee, more love to Thee. On the last, then shall my latest breath whisper Thy praise. Mark, would you close us in prayer, please? <clears throat> Thank you, Father, again, for your word being preached to us tonight, Lord God, and showing us the difference between being born of uh, the flesh and being born of the Spirit, Father God. I guess I never really saw it like Pastor explained it tonight, that, you know, we don't have that blood, and when we go to heaven, we have a new, we're a new creature in Christ. And even though I knew that, Lord, just the way he explained it tonight, that you used him to explain it to us. Really appreciate that, Father God. And Lord, help us to go out and take the gospel to a lost and dying world and hand out more tracts and be a better witness for you, Father God. And we'll be careful to praise you and thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, 375, one verse. 375.